So I did a video a while ago just for my friends um, in case if I was away and they were staying over if something went wrong with the hot water boiler system kind of had to troubleshoot it. I've gotten quite a few views on it so I thought I would do a follow-up video just around how a zone valve works because um, this is one of the most common things that fail in a hot water boiler heating system, um, a hydronic hot water heating system. So. This is the boiler here, and then this is the zone valves. And what these zone valves do, as as they're called zone valves, your house is broken up into different zones. So as you can see on mine, it has main, second floor, the den, the bathroom. So I have four zones. Hot water flows from the boiler through the valve, if it's open, and circulates around the house and then back to the boiler and gets reheated. That's the cycle of heating, so real simple. When you turn on the thermostat, what it does is it completes a circuit and it turns on the valve which then allows hot water to circle through and it also tells the boiler to turn on and I'm going to go over the components of how that works. So I'm going to take the cover off of this zone valve. So it's the electrical mechanical valve meaning this is the electrical motor and there's a mechanical portion to it which is the valve itself. I don't know if you can see it there. I don't know if I have enough light. But what happens is, when you turn on the thermostat, it completes the circuit, causing this motor to turn on, and it holds the valve open. So it keeps the valve open, and it allows water to throw, um, flow through. Another part of the valve, the third part of the valve, so the first part is the electrical, second part is the mechanical valve, third part is this end switch and what that is it's a micro switch and all it does is it's like a light switch essentially except for it's spring loaded you click when it turns on so when it's turned on it completes a circuit as well which tells the boiler to turn on so they call that an end switch um, I'm gonna take a valve apart and show you how it completely works because I have a few that I've switched out previously because they fail the most common thing to fail is either the power head or the, which is this electrical motor, or the end switch burns out through contact and it shorts out. Um, so, how can you get heat if one of these fail and they stay, get stuck open? Well, on the bottom here, let's see if I can. So, on the bottom here, there is this switch so this opens freely this one where the valve is not on so this one's calling for heat right now the valve is open the second floor is not calling for heat notice it only moves this far first floor second floor you can manually open it if something goes wrong with this motor because when you open this watch and there's a spot where it clicks back and it holds it open. It now is open, the valve is actually physically open because I manually did it. It allows water to now circle through the system. So now this pipe, when I touch it, is hot. It was cold before. That's if something's wrong with the thermostat or something's wrong with the valve or wiring. And then you can close it just by simply pushing over and letting go and you see it springs back. So that's essentially how you can get heat, um, provided as long as there's nothing wrong with the boiler itself. Um, I think that's about it. Works quite simply. Um, there's just a couple wires and um, some switches and a motor and a valve. I'm going to now switch over to the table and show you how the valve works. I'll take one apart and you can see um, all the individual components. I just wanted to mention one other last thing while, while I'm here. The way you can tell, and I've kind of briefly touched on it earlier, if you have heat on a certain zone, is this will be hot. Be careful when you touch it, but it will be hot. Depending on the zone, if you try and troubleshoot a certain area, see which if the pipes are hot. Because if they're hot, then you know that they're circulating water. Um, if they're not, but the valve is either open or not open, there might be trouble in other parts of your heating system.
So I just wanted to mention that really quickly. Okay, so here's a valve that I've taken off. Um, normally, this is the spot that turns when the switch gets moved over. As you can see, it springs over. And when you apply power, you will actually physically see this switch move. Okay, and then what it turns is it turns this which is connected to the valve, to the mechanical valve where the water actually flows through. Uh, I'm just trying to see if I actually have a whole one, which I think I do. Okay, yeah, so here's the actual valve itself, and it turns this. So basically, what your completed valve looks like is like that. This motor gets electricity, it turns on, and then which in turns opens the valve which allows the water to come through and it's a it's also a gate so it can only go one way it's a check valve at least I think that's or maybe that's just the flow regardless that's the valve part so the valve itself or the I should say the zone valve itself the, the mechanics of it I've taken the screws out so to take this electrical motor off so this is the power head, what they call, and you can see there's gears on it. So it multiplies force. This spins on the inside. Let's see if I can just take this off. There we go. You can see, I think it's a brushless motor. I'm not 100% sure, but I think it's very similar to like a, an RC motor. brushless outrunner type of motor. I could be wrong, someone can correct me on that. I don't know much about electrical electrical engineering. Um, so that's this, this is the power head and there's gears in here which multiplies the force of this little motor which then in turn turns on the valve. Okay, so that's that guy. And there's two wires to it which completes a circuit. So you're gonna put power to it. So if you were to put 24 volts AC to it this motor would spin. Uh, and yes, by the way, these are 24 volts AC, so you need to tran uh, these are powered by a transformer. But for the sake of this video, it doesn't really matter because this is just about how it works. Um, anyways, I'll leave that intact. Get my player pliers, and I'll just take off this metal bracket. Okay, this is just a motor mounting bracket that I just popped off. Now you can see there's some springs which hold this. So when that motor this little spline gear, this little gear here, spins, it turns this, which then in turns opens your, your valve. This little guy in here has two wires, the red wires. This guy right here, this is your end switch. When you push on it, see you can hear the click. What that does is it provides continuity, so when you push down on it, it completes the circuit, tells the boiler to come on. Let go, boiler shuts off. That's all it's to it. And what, how that comes on is when the motor spins, this little guy here spins up and then hits it like that. The problem that happens is the sometimes this will fail and it won't open all the way and it'll come short from hitting the end switch so the valve might appear to be open and letting water through but because it doesn't hit that end switch to tell the boiler to turn the pump and the boiler on it won't circulate the water so just keep that in mind in terms of troubleshooting as well So 
it might it could be the end switch it could be something mechanical or it could be something electrical that's essentially how a zone valve works hopefully I didn't confuse anyone and hopefully I was clear in the explanation so three parts to it electrical mechanical with the valve and then the end switch which is electrical again so very easy very simple it's not that complicated just once you know how the few little parts work it uh, it all comes together so anyways thanks for watching hopefully this helped you out um, and hopefully I didn't confuse any of you and and this video wasn't too long so anyways thanks for watching